Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. This is your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. We know how hard and difficult it is to get to church and Bible study, so that's where this ministry brings the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word. Thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today as this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We hope that you are strengthened and encouraged by the end of this program and we pray that if you don't know Jesus now that you do know him before the program is over. We pray that if you have taken your eyes off of Jesus that you put them back on him and repent as the Bible says Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We pray that if you are hopeless, that you are given a hope in Jesus Christ that will not fail you. God is always good, and he's doing so many great things through this ministry. Thanks to all of you who prayerfully consider giving to the ministry and all your generous contributions, we are able to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world, reaching so many. All we need is an invite from you, and we would love to fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. So please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org to learn more and book us today so we can continue to build God's kingdom together. Lord, we just want to thank you for today, Lord. Um, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Uh, we thank you for always being good to us, Lord, um, even in our trials, um, even when we turn our back on you, Lord God. Lord, uh, please speak to your people the way that you want to speak to them, Lord, emptying me of myself. Lord, I pray that every word that comes out of my mouth um, is of you, Lord God. Um, Lord, we know that um, everything I teach on, everything you give me lines up with the word of God, and we're thankful for that. Lord, I thank you for everybody who's listening today, Lord. Uh, may you bless them. May you strengthen them. May you encourage them. Lord, may people come to, to know you by the end of this message, Lord. May people come back to you and may people be given a hope in you that will not fail them. Lord, we just thank you in advance. We thank you for all you are and for all you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today, the Lord wanted me to relay a very powerful message to everybody today. And the title of that message is hell. There's a lot of preachers out there today that are preaching sermons that make you feel good. There's a lot of preachers out there today that are preaching messages that are tickling your ears. Well, I'm here to tell you today that I'm not a preacher that's here to make you feel good. I'm not a preacher that's here to tickle your ears, but I am a preacher that stands on the word of God and preaches the whole word of God. If I'm going to preach on the goodness of God, I'm going to preach on hell. If I'm going to preach on heaven, I'm going to preach on the lake of fire. If I'm going to preach on, if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you go to heaven, then I'm going to preach on, if you reject Jesus as Lord and Savior, you go to hell. People say, well, how can God send me to hell if he's so loving? God does not send us to hell. We send ourselves. We're here on earth for a very short period of time. We're here on earth for a blink of an eye. If you take every grain of sand on planet earth, in the parking lots, on the beaches, on the ocean floor, and you take one of those grains of sand, that's how short of a time we're here on earth compared to all the grain of sand in the world. And even that comparison doesn't quite compare because heaven is forever and ever and ever and ever, just like hell is forever and ever and ever and ever. There's no person and there's no sin on earth worth jeopardizing your eternal salvation i'm not a once saved always saved kind of guy i believe that jesus took care of everything on the cross but i do believe in relationship not necessarily religion and i do believe that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and we do need to obey god's commands because jesus says if you love me you will obey my commands if you disobey the commands of the Lord, you're showing him that you don't love him. In 1 John 3, I believe the word of God talks about if you have the seed of God living on the inside of you, you're not going to go on and continue living in sin. We're all going to slip up. We're all going to stumble. We all struggle with certain things. And God knows our heart. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But do you love the Lord? 
Are you willing to repent and be forgiven of all unrighteousness? Are you willing to live for the Lord and help other people and lead other people to Jesus Christ or go out there and do worldly things? The choice is yours. The choice is mine. Let's go ahead and start in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, we're all going to die that first death. Either Jesus is going to come back or we're going to die that first death. You know, death is an unfortunate part of life, but it needs to happen. God has a story written out. And this story is with Lucifer in heaven becoming so prideful, being cast down to earth. His name changed to Satan. He roams around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. One third of the angels came down to earth with Satan, a.k.a. fallen angels, demons. Two thirds of the angels stayed in heaven with God. But the enemy wants to see you sin. The enemy wants you to stumble. The enemy wants you to mess up. So now we have this life that God has given us and he's given it to us more abundantly. But there's an unfortunate part of life, which is death. It's unfortunate that a six month old baby has to die. It's unfortunate that a 10-year-old has to die. It's unfortunate that a 23-year-old has to die, a 37-year-old has to die, and so on and so forth. But if the Lord were to tell us that we were all to live to, to 80 years old, then it'd be survival of the fittest. People would be stealing people's cars. People would be killing each other. People would be robbing each other. People would be breaking into each other's homes, killing each other. What people want to do now is if we were all to live to the age of 80, they would want to live up to the age of 79, 363 days, and then get on their knees and repent and cry out to God. But it doesn't work like that. We all die at different ages. We all die at different times. The most important thing out of all of that is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We never know when it's going to be our time to go. But we do know who we can choose to live for. Are you living for the enemy or are you living for the Lord? The choice is yours. The Bible says the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire. It is your choice to be a coward. It is our choice to be unbelieving. It is our choice to be abominable. It is our choice to murder. It is our choice to be sexually immoral. It is our choice to be a sorcerer. It is our choice to have idols. It is our choice to put things in place of God. The choice is ours. God doesn't send us to hell. We send ourselves. So today, do you want to spend eternity in heaven? Or do you want to spend eternity in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone, which is the second death? You know, people have died. And gone to heaven and come back. People have died and gone to hell and come back. There's a reason why God does this. It's to warn us. It's to let us know that there is a hell. It's to warn us and to let us know that we need to repent and turn from our wicked ways. These people who have gone to hell, they were saying how they had a fight for each and every breath. Every breath that they took, they were fighting for. Can you imagine fighting for every breath for eternity? That would not be fun. They said there was a fire that was so hot, it was causing them to gnash their teeth. There was a smoke so thick that it was causing them to cough and not be able to breathe. There were screams so loud that they didn't want to hear anymore because everybody around you is screaming and you're screaming in the faces of other people as well. There's rodents running around. There's smoke all over the place. There's people yelling and screaming and you're fighting for every breath. It is not fun. And here on earth, we have a choice on where it is we want to go. Do you want to continue to live as a drunkard? Do you want to continue to live getting high? Do you want to continue to live sexually immoral? Do you want to continue living watching pornography? Do you want to continue living being a liar? Do you want to continue living stealing? 
because those are the ones that have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But there's good news. God said that if you repent of those things, you'll be forgiven. God said if you turn from those things, you will be forgiven. The choice is yours to continue living that way or to repent and turn to God. Matthew 25, 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Everlasting punishment does not sound too fun. Everlasting punishment does not sound too joyful. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. There are people today who are turning their back on the Lord. There are people today who are turning their back on Jesus. There are people today who are doing whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want. And the Bible says that they are wicked and they shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse nine, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. See, a lot of preachers today are preaching feel good messages. A lot of preachers today are trying to tickle your ears. A lot of preachers today are, have hidden motives and they want your money in the offering basket. So they're going to preach about heaven and the goodness of God and make you feel good. But I believe that if we begin preaching more on hell, it can scare people into salvation. We start preaching and teaching about hell. We start preaching and teaching about everlasting punishment. We start preaching and teaching about the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. Hopefully that'll bring somebody to salvation. When I was out there getting high, when I was out there getting drunk, when I was out there doing whatever I wanted to do, whenever I wanted to do it, I didn't really know much about hell. But once I started to learn more about hell and there's a lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone and there's gnashing of teeth and there's people yelling and screaming and there's thick smoke everywhere and everybody's fighting for their next breath and it's a place of torment. That's what really helped me to be freed and healed and delivered and set free. Every time I would look at my watch, I would see the second hand on my watch tick. And I never knew if that was the second that Jesus was going to come back. So here I am getting high and here I am getting drunk and here I am doing my own thing. And I'm watching the clock. I'm watching the second hand. I'm watching it tick on my watch. I'm watching it tick on the wall. And I got really scared, wondering if that was going to be the second that Jesus came back. That's what really brought me to my knees and Help me to cry out to God and ask him to forgive me of everything and everything that I've ever done because I don't want to burn in the lake of fire. I don't want to burn with fire and brimstone. I don't want to have to fight for every breath. I don't want to have to hear that loud, annoying screaming and be up there with rodents and thick smoke. I don't want to have to be around that. I want to be in heaven with Jesus for eternity. I want to go to heaven where there's no crying. There's no tears. There's no depression. There's no lying. There's no stealing. There's no cheating. It's something that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined. Mark 930, Mark 943. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands and go to hell into fire that shall never be quenched. There's a lot of people out there who, who think that this is figuratively well, I'm going to step out in faith here and say, I believe that Jesus meant this was literal. If your hand is causing you to sin, then cut it off because it is better for us to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands and go to hell. Now, I believe what Jesus was saying here was he's given us a choice. Do you want to simply repent and ask for the forgiveness of your sins? and be forgiven? Or do you want to chop your hand off to stop sinning? Do you want to trust and believe in the Lord and walk in step with the Holy Spirit? Or do you want to chop your hand off to help you to stop sinning? Do you want to know that it's by the power of the Holy Spirit and to stay in step with the Holy Spirit and know that it's by the power of the Holy Spirit to be freed, healed, and delivered? Or do you want to chop your hand off to be convinced that that's going to help you to stop sinning? The choice is ours. Jude chapter one, verse seven, 
as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Eternal fire, eternal fire, eternal fire. You know, I got a message the other day and it was pictures of the fires that are going on in California. I believe that those with spiritual eyes and spiritual ears are able to see and hear what it is that God is trying to tell us because I believe that God is giving us a warning of what hell really looks like. You look at the fires in the, in the state of California and you see all the smoke and all the fires and, and how dark it is. Those are glimpses of what it looks like in hell. And that's where people are going when they reject the relationship with Jesus. That's where people are going when they choose worldly things over the Lord. That's where people are going when they choose to live for Satan as opposed to choosing to live for God. The choice is ours. There's a place called hell. It burns with fire and brimstone. It's the second death. Proverbs 23, 13 to 14. Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. What the Bible is saying is train a child up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Last week, I had to spank my son because he made a wrong choice. And it hurt me to spank him more than it hurt him to get the spanking. And the Lord was weighing on my heart. I spank him because I love him. I discipline him because I love him. I don't want him to grow up and be an animal. I don't want him to grow up and be a murderer. I don't want him to grow up and be sexually immoral. I don't want him to grow up and lie, steal, and cheat. I don't want him to grow up as a coward. So it's up to me, his father, to discipline him. So he grows up into a successful young man that loves Jesus and leans not on his own understanding, but leans on the understanding of of the Lord. Hell is a garbage dump. <laughs> the word that is often translated hell in the New Testament is Gehenna. This was a place where the garbage was dumped in New Testament times. Every kind of garbage was thrown there, including the corpses of criminals, worms bred and fed in the filth while smoke filled the place due to continually burning fires. I'm going to read that again. Hell is like a garbage dump. The word is often translated hell in the New Testament is Gehenna. This was a place where the garbage was dumped in the New Testament times. That is a place where the Lord is going to dump you because you reject him. That is a place where, where, where you're going to actually dump yourself because you reject a relationship with Jesus Christ. Every kind of garbage was thrown there. That's pretty harsh right there where, man, I'm trying to word this correctly, but those who reject Jesus and want nothing to do with Jesus are equivalent to garbage because they don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now we choose to be garbage. We choose to have a relationship with Jesus and be fearfully and wonderfully made magnificent in the eyes of God. We choose to be Kings and Queens and, and priests and have the authority that Jesus has given us, or we choose to be that garbage that's going to be thrown into the dump. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be garbage and I don't want to be tossed into a dump. I want to be viewed as fearfully and wonderfully made. I want to be viewed as unique. I want to be a king and, and have the power and the authority that God has given me to preach to anybody and everybody that comes my way. Hell is like a prison. One of the clearest pictures Jesus gave of hell was that of a prison. He told a parable of a king's servant who was sent to jail for cruel and unforgiving behavior. Then adding this warning, so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. I hear a lot of people today who have been to prison who never want to go back. They don't want to go back to prison, but yet they're doing things that are going to cause them to go back to prison. If they don't want to go to prison that's here on earth made by human hands, then why are they living their life in a way that's going to send them to prison, a.k.a. hell? Why are they doing things that are going to send them to a prison with fire and brimstone? Why are they doing things that are going to send them to hell? Why are they doing things like rejecting a relationship with Jesus Christ? The choice is theirs. 
Hell is a place of complete darkness. Jesus spoke of those who would be cast out into utter darkness. Jesus does not merely describe hell as darkness, but the darkness, as if to emphasize that it'll be infinitely worse than any physical, moral, mental, or spiritual darkness ever experienced here on earth. That's pretty scary. When we were children growing up and, and, and we were in the dark, we were scared of the dark. But God is saying that hell is worse than that darkness. It's a darkness like we've never seen before. I believe that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined for, for what God has in store for those who love him. But I also feel like God has a place where no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined for those who reject him. Jesus often spoke in parables. However, in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31, he is relating a true story. Here is an incredible behind the scenes glimpse into the invisible world. When Jesus related the story about the rich ruler and Lazarus, the beggar, he was addressing it to the people who were obsessed with greed and materialism. People who were possessed by possessions. The story in Luke is one of two men. The one who owned everything ended up with nothing, while the other owned nothing but inherited everything. One went to eternal comfort and the other to torment. The rich man, a man of means, with considerable resources at his disposal. The rich man was clothed in purple, signifying royalty. However, the rich man's sin was not wealth, but his disregard for spiritual values, which revealed itself in his prideful flaunting of resources and his neglect of a starving disabled man at his door. Lazarus, while the rich man lived in splendor, Lazarus ate the crumbs from the man's table. We also read that Lazarus was carried and laid at the gate, possibly indicating that he was crippled also. When Lazarus died, the angels carried him into heaven. However, the rich man did not get the same treatment. It's better to have little here on earth and spend eternity in heaven than try to kill, steal, and destroy to have nothing in hell. Hades. Death is the great equalizer. The rich man died just as Lazarus did, but rather than being carried to heaven, he speaks of torment. Torment is a place of suffering reserved for non-believers. I want to take this time out to encourage everybody to give their life to Jesus. I want to encourage everybody that heaven is for everybody, but we need to call upon the name of the Lord. We need to an answer to the call of salvation. It's nothing that we can do for Jesus already took care of it on the cross. However, it is by his grace and it is a gift from him that we have the gift of salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus comes back, he's not necessarily coming back for you and I. He's coming back for his Holy Spirit that either lives in you or doesn't live in you. His Holy Spirit is only going to live in you if you believe and call upon his name. If you want a relationship with him. So to get rid of any shame and guilt and unforgiveness and hate in your heart, to be freed, healed and delivered and born again spiritually, as Jesus talks about in John chapter three, I ask that you repeat after me. But again, it's not my words or repeating after me. That's going to get you saved. It's really believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confessing with your mouth. And so today we confess, Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. We ask that you come into our heart as personal Lord and Savior, Lord, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you lead us, guide us, direct us, and that you be Lord and Savior over my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I believe that if you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. If you're backsliding, just come back to Jesus. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Don't think you dug yourself in such a deep hole where you can't get out because that's just a lie from the enemy. But repent and keep your heart on the things above. Keep your eyes off of this world as it gets worse and worse and worse and know that God is going to come back to get us and that we're going to be able to spend eternity in heaven. Don't go to hell, but go to heaven <laughs> in Jesus name. We want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to tune in today. We hope that people came to salvation and repentance today. Please continue to partner with us for we build God's kingdom together and put the enemy on his back. 
Always remember that we are already victorious, just needing to persevere and finish the race. Don't fear anything, for God is on the throne and His plan will prevail. Please book us today to come fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. All we need is an invite. Please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org and prayerfully consider contributing to the ministry as we are so very thankful for the contributions as they are being used to lead others to Jesus, bring others back to Jesus, and give people a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. God always seems to make a way when there doesn't seem to be one. Feel free to contact me by email at any time Timothy Greco Ministries at gmail.com. And if nobody told you they love you today, we love you, God loves you, and we pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.